Hey y'all, welcome back to Between Us Foods. This is Donita once again. If you're new here, this is part two of creating choreography. Part one, we discussed the process of creating and how you can get started. Check it out if you haven't. In this episode, Sam and Kevin are here again to talk about challenges and blockers that we may face and maybe how to overcome those. So Between Us Foods, let's talk about it. Okay, so we talked about a lot about the like block. You guys already mentioned a lot of your blockers in the first part. Mm-hmm. Um, whether you get stuck with how to flow or like choosing music. Um, but what other challenges can you expect with creating choreography? Um, you're gonna not like the song you have to choreograph to. <laughs> Ooh, that's the big one. That's the that's the worst for me, honestly. Like, I, like connecting is so key. So when I have Ooh. to choreograph something. I was just off. I'm just like, ooh, this is yeah. weird. This is foreign, you know? This is uncomfortable. And it is because someone, like, chose it for you? Mm-hmm. Oh, Rather it be, like, a gig or just a simple, like, yeah, like, we have to use this song for this type of event or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, when you're kind of, uh, I won't say targeted, but, like, you're forced to do the song, then that's when it's really tough. Because mm. you'll get there. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Or have you been through that, too? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you, what just, do you guys... What do you, how do you deal <laughs> well like it's like i don't know you kind of have like no choice yeah right <laughs> so you just like work with what you have mm-hmm. um and try to enjoy it um but yeah there's like no way around it because like usually it's if you get like a gig or something mm-hmm. they're like hey this this and this are you interested and it's like yeah and it's like oh well it's it's this song and you're just like <laughs> yeah oh right <laughs> oh yeah i'm doing it right. yeah yeah but um it's definitely yeah. like a learning experience you know like and it's something you'll grow from like Mm -hmm. there's some benefits to it there's Mm -hmm. nothing like against it it's just gonna suck a little (laughs) if anything it'll hone in your skills yeah exactly or widen your range Mm -hmm, exactly Mm -hmm. because we do a lot of event choreography too and Mm -hmm. most of the time if not all they choose a song for us and Mm -hmm. i think what i do is like so what do you like about the song like what do you imagine and they're like well i imagine like that i'm a princess and like (laughs) like it's starry night and you know and so they create that imagery for you and i'm like okay i can make that happen you know what i mean (laughs) so it's kind of one suggestion (laughs) um (laughs) what other blockers do you guys face Mm. um being pressed for time yes creating so much this is all in one thing Mm -hmm. like creating so much and then being like i don't like this yeah (laughs) i think um yeah that just it just really is like a low blow to yourself to just like go through that Mm -hmm. um but then again it's just like it's another obstacle you have to try and overcome um and i feel like given the right mindset and the way you react to it um determines like the outcome of like how you feel in the end and most times it's like yeah i'm I really i'm really proud of myself for like pushing through mm. um because now i actually like this piece or now it's like mm. one of my favorites yeah. so you're um, saying like you're forced to create something in a short amount of time yeah and it's not the like create pr- greatest like yeah. version of it I or guess. even sometimes like i'll sit on pieces like kevin said for like three days um and then I'll teach it, like, say, the next, the fourth day, the next day. And I'm just, like, questioning everything. Mm-hmm. And then the question goes <laughs> in my head, like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna create something new. Mm-hmm. And, like, force everything. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, maybe not. Um, yeah, it's just, like, a weird thing you can't really prevent. Right. It's, like, that whole, like, again, that self-critical thing. Mm-hmm. But You're going to be forced to create sometimes when you don't want to. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you may not physically or mentally want to have to choreograph or something but you may have to teach something tomorrow or whatever that may be like to your friends or you know to your team like you may have to teach something so that stress can be a little tough Mm -hmm. but like we said earlier like working under pressure can like Mm -hmm. really like push out some of your greatest work so you're gonna touch on that um because it happened to me this weekend Mm -hmm. because i'm teaching tomorrow um and i normally don't create at like my parents house Mm. um and I'm like, I have no time. <laughs> I didn't really prepare a week in advance. So right. like, here we go. Yeah. Um, and it's like, I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites, but I, I really enjoy it. 
Right. So you're um, saying your piece tomorrow is going to be really great, and we should take it. Probably. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here, the listeners. I mean, I don't know when this is releasing, but right. anyways. <laughs> It's just done. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So I think being under that pressure in combination of like environments that you, I wouldn't say you're not like you don't enjoy, but like you're not comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it's not always bad. It's just like how you approach it. Mm-hmm. Right. So with challenges comes, I think, great reward if you take like the right mindset into it. Mm-hmm. And growth, basically. Because yeah. you yeah. always grow if you're not in your comfort zone. Yep. Um, so we talked about earlier like choreo block when you're mm-hmm. like I don't know what to do next I have no idea like name a time where that happened to you and like how you overcame that all mm. the time yeah right <laughs> like when does that not really happen like Jeez. it's gonna happen I feel like the best thing to do is just to as like corny as this is like go like push through mm. um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll like I'll I keep like my body automatically keeps doing this one thing that I don't mm. necessarily like, right. but I'll just keep it there for the time being so I can move on and then mm. kind of like puzzle my like workshop my way back and like mm. fix that part that I didn't like so much. But just keep going because mm. I think it's uh, sometimes when I choreograph is very momentum based. Mm-hmm. So like if I'm going like if I'm keep creating like I can finish it quick. But um, like if I'm kind of getting stuck all the time, it's like I don't want to do this anymore. I keep getting stuck. I'm gonna give up. So I think a big part of it is just kind of pushing through Mm. and like it sucks, but it's okay. It'll get better, you know? Mm -hmm. It just made me think about, um, I always tell my students this. I learned so much from my students Mm -hmm. and more than half the time, they're not really like saying anything to me. It's like do their actions. Um, It's just like, it's okay if you don't get this combo or if this one move is really tough because you got like hundreds of other ones to execute. Um, And as long as you're having fun, like it's okay. Mm -hmm. And if you don't feel comfortable doing a certain move, like do it to where it's like catered to you or comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just thought about this right now. Like when I get into that choreo block, um, I'll usually overthink it and think like this one move means everything. Right. Even if it's like just a snap or something, I don't know. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But usually I'll try to, like I tell my students, do it in your own way. Like maybe do the same move, retain the same concept, but execute it a little differently. Um, just so like it's something new and I'm like, oh, okay, I like that better. Um, yeah, and in the end, it's just like, it's just one move, you know what I mean? And it's like, I feel like if it's smack dab in the middle of the piece too, like it really means nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I don't mean to say it means nothing, <laughs> but like in the grand scheme of things, um, right, I feel right. like just, looking at it the bigger picture like it's just one move like kevin says like mm-hmm. with, uh, within the whole puzzle like just just make it work and it'll work so you're saying like just keep going forward come just, back to it yeah if you, can. If you have to yeah if mm-hmm. you can yeah, yeah if you need to sleep on it mm-hmm. like but just give yourself time just don't give up i think yeah. that's the biggest thing that's yeah. where you like don't actually grow mm-hmm. when you give up on something just because it's too difficult or too frustrating like mm-hmm. just keep going yeah as corny as that is <laughs> like it's truth truth um so have you guys ever choreographed to a song <clears throat> and you connected to it at first and then mm-hmm. you realize like i'm not feeling it anymore mm-hmm. and then just pause it mm-hmm. and then come back to it and it's like okay i want to finish this mm. have you been through that yeah no, um yeah. i had a piece um and it was uh, w- like one of my most favorite songs uh, like of all time um and i've made i think two pieces before this most Mm. recent one and they're all very different i think um so i don't think it's in a sense where i felt like i needed to do more with it um it was just like another opportunity to see like where i'm at currently with choreography or my dance journey Mm -hmm. like what's going to come out this time Mm. um but yeah i i usually usually it's not the whole like being into a song and then falling out of it it's usually for me like being into a song putting a lot into the choreography and then not being comfortable with what i put into it Mm -hmm. versus like Mm -hmm. the actual foundation of it um yeah that's not a good or bad thing i'm just Mm -hmm. just pointing out that that's that's okay too yeah i definitely feel like uh i've had those moments before and i think it's more of a at the time i choreographed it originally 
I didn't know exactly. Or I, I knew what I wanted to say in my choreography, but I didn't know if what I created was kind of a, I guess, expressing that statement or whatever I wanted to say. So sometimes I'll shelve it and then come back to it and kind of like feel like, okay, now I can really express what I want to express. Yeah. And now that people can actually take a grasp of like what, um, what it was meant to be, not what it what it could be. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think that that does happen to me, just because like I want to make sure that whatever I'm putting out is just me and like I'm being honest and true and its fullest form. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So even then, you can completely take a break of a piece, not even yeah. continue it, and then. But there's times where you can actually um, come back to it. Mm -hmm. Has there been a piece where you could just completely scrapped? You know, you didn't. You never finished. Yeah. Oh yeah, plenty. Yeah. Just plenty. That's the whole like <laughs> I'm not feeling this anymore and then yeah. I start fresh. Um it's honestly just hit or miss. Mm -hmm. Like it, it doesn't happen too often, but when it does, it's just like dang. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like here we go again. Yeah. And you don't know why. Um but I, yeah. I don't know, it's just like one of those things you have to take too. You can't have too many wins without right. enough mm -hmm. losses. In a sense that's a version of moving forward because yeah. you're still you choose mm -hmm. a different song mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly and most of the time it's not like i've made like eight eight counts and i'm gonna scrap it no yeah. it's like most of the time like i had like two eight counts here and like <laughs> yeah i might as well just scrap it like it's, not, it's nothing really you know it's yeah. not like it's yeah. a full piece you know I see. so i definitely yeah okay for sure uh would you say that there's a difference creating choreo for a competition Ooh. in case a set mm -hmm. um for your class or for a for a video oh yeah for sure. Definitely. What are those differences? Um, definitely for stage and like uh, class, at least for those two really, like I feel like stage gets choreographed a little different because mm -hmm. things get seen differently. You have mm -hmm. to think about it like from an out, like an outer perspective, not less of like, you can do all these cool little finger touches and stuff, mm -hmm. but like it might not read as well on stage, yeah. you know, like as maybe a class, you know? Um, so I definitely think like the way you choreograph for a stage is might be more visual. It may be bigger, maybe cleaner. Uh, compared to like a class where you can just kind of like go and like truly express and like it can be a little messy it can be a little uh crazy i guess mm -hmm. but yeah yeah um i think you do like especially when you choreograph for class mm -hmm. um is like kind of backtracking or thinking or putting it together backwards right um i do that when i choreograph for stage mm. um just like again how things how are things going to be perceived visually um are certain things worth it uh, right. is a phrase I ask a lot for myself. Yes. <laughs> um, I feel that. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that you also have to think with, like, how do I, this is, can this, can blocking com complement this? Mm -hmm. There's so many questions, more questions I go into <laughs> putting or setting a piece putting for stage. It's um, like a whole nother game, yeah, honestly, really. like staging and Yeah. It has its own set of challenges. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I think for the videos, I feel like videos and classes like can be put into the same realm mm -hmm. for, mo for the most part. Um, yeah. I think camera is like even more you can be, for lack of better words, intricate mm -hmm. um, because like it's not too hard to zoom in. It's not too hard to like take a step up with the camera. Um, and I feel like artistically you can... I don't want to say get a lo get away with a lot of things, but you don't have to be more or less structured when you're creating for class or um, right. for camera. And if you choose to, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but typically what happens is like you see a lot of choreographers uh, like class footage and then you see what they set for stage and just all out. I think generally like things are more readable. Things are more clear. Mm -hmm. Um and it's obviously created for a bigger purpose and there's a mm -hmm. difference. I think there's still artistic integrity through both. Yes. It's just sure. like what you're putting your art, like where the canvas is basically. Right. Especially if you're like staging, like you're not staging on one person. Most of the time, maybe mm -hmm. five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like very low, but to what, maybe 20, 25, mm -hmm. 30 people. Mm -hmm. Like, so you, so you have to choreograph this, some, or you choreograph it a little differently because of the way you know how it's gonna look on different people you have that in mind already while yeah you're creating for it. sure and uh when it comes to like video stuff like what's cool about choreographing for like a video is like you don't have to necessarily have like i guess you could have like a you do have a finish and an end but you can kind of fill in in between so you can do like a little bit of choreo here and then mm -hmm. some b-roll or mm -hmm. like i don't know like play with the camera a camera switch or like you can be more creative that way with like choreographing choreographing for a video mm -hmm. but uh 
yeah, I think most of the time everything is a little different, but videos and class choreography can be the same. Because mm-hmm. I could teach something at class and then shoot it in a video, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I'll have That's different as- aspects, but, uh, you know, like, if you're going to choreograph something for a video, I say just um, do your best to just try to be creative with the camera. You know, it's a it's a tool for you to use. Like, why not be more creative about it and less of just shooting it, like, regular mm-hmm. and in a nice camera, you know? Yeah, because you have all that tools. Yeah. <laughs> My, mine as well. Like, why, take advan- why not take advantage of something like that and That's be more true. artistic that way? That's true. Yeah, and I think a lot of people you work with too that are skilled in the videographer realm, Mm -hmm. um, it's like a collab in itself. Right, it is. Like, um, or at least most people that I work, or all of the people I worked with are just very like, all right, what do you want? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I I don't know. Like like my first few videos, I was just like, dude, I don't know why you're asking me this. Um, But it gives you a different light to to see artistically, like Mm -hmm. how that piece looks yeah. or how certain things can pop right. based on yeah. how you utilize the camera. Um, so I think that's a, a gift in itself too. Mm-hmm. It's starting to add to your choreography too. Yeah. Yes. Perspective. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you guys' favorite or like you, which one out of the three is your favorite stage class video? Mm. Hmm. I'm not going to say stage because that <laughs> stresses me out, honestly. Like, it's fun. It's fun. But like I said earlier, it's like a different, it's like a different ball game. Like, it's like a whole nother thing you got to learn. Mm-hmm. A whole nother skill set for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so sh- shout out to all the great stagers or blockers out yeah, there. Yeah, for real. My hat's <laughs> off to you. Um, but I guess for me, I would say like video. I think for me, just because like, like I said, I could be super creative and mm-hmm. like, um, make it more of like a visual and less of a class even though i haven't shot a video in a long time uh, it definitely is more like i guess i feel more free i feel more i feel less limited because mm-hmm. class is kind of like i do it all the time so it's just <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you know it's like oh yeah that's cool yeah, yeah. it's like a normal process but yeah. i see i see what about you sam just looking at it from mm-hmm. creating standpoint and i feel like it'd be a video mm-hmm. yeah just because I feel like generally we tend to be more specific and like focused in on like what we're putting out when we do a video. Mm-hmm. Um, not that, not to say that the others don't require that as well. It's just more of it for the video. Right. Um, and it's just like a unique thing. Like I feel like being on stage or setting something for stage is also unique. It only comes like one to four times a year. Right. Um, <laughs> But sometimes videos come less frequent than that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and we don't realize that. Um, but in terms of like experiencing, like creating and then being able to do it, I, nothing beats stage for me. Just because I feel like I'm a very passion driven person. Mm. And that really comes out when I hit stage. Um, like, I'm sure I can talk to all of my teammates that I've been able to share the stage with. Like I'm usually like yelling or talking or something, mm-hmm. just I like, can't hold it in. Right. And then usually when I get <laughs> off, it's just like I'm in tears <laughs> because I'm just like I love this so much. Right. Um, and yeah, not even just creating and doing your own stuff on stage, but like just being on stage in general. Mm. Um, so in terms of like experiencing the thing past the creative process, because I think that's part of it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, stage for sure. But then artistically like mentally putting everything together um probably video video if that right. makes sense i know that's just like <laughs> but, but, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense <laughs> what um if you could give yourself an advice like your past self what would it be knowing all the knowledge you have now so much uh, just do it just do it like yeah. uh, do what <laughs> <laughs> just it. do it um but yeah, I think it's just that. Like, um, I feel like, hmm. hold that thought, hold that mm-hmm. thought. <laughs> um, mm. If I could tell myself one thing is like, don't care what other people think. Mm. Um, like, you are your own artist. It's good to pull inspiration and derive it from somewhere. Um, but then what you do with it should never be, like, if I, if I, I think if people have the time to, like, be so critical in in a way that's not constructive to your art, Mm -hmm. it's like, 
defeats the purpose of art. Um, I think it's just try to appreciate whatever it is that's being put out for what it is. Mm-hmm. And then if you can connect to it a little bit more, then that's great. Um, but yeah, if I could tell myself one thing is just be bold, be fearless in the way you create. Mm. Um, to just as simple as it sounds, not really take into account like what other people think. Because at the end of the day, you should be like unapologetically yourself mm-hmm. um, in all aspects, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I feel like with art, it's already self-critical enough and I don't think taking in words from others that maybe aren't the most uplifting right. is the best thing for yourself mm-hmm. and taking them to heart. Um, so yes. that's one thing. I think that I still tell myself that now. <laughs> but, till this day. Yeah, yeah. Till this I can day. tell myself. Every day. Um, <laughs> I guess I was just telling, yeah, just don't give up. Like, uh, and don't, or hmm, maybe stay, uh, stay creative. I think it might be a bigger mm. one. Um, I think before I used to be kind of like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't know how this is going to look. This, lo- this looks kind of crazy. Like I was almost afraid to do certain things because I felt like it looked weird or it looked okay. like different, you know? Um, but yeah, I definitely think that'd be my note to myself. Note like to yourself. just do it, <clears throat> just, <laughs> just do be it. creative and do it, you know, like, yeah. um, and who cares about the repercussions? Cause at least mm-hmm. you're trying. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, I think it's normal to have those thoughts at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's just learning how to overcome them. Mm -hmm. Um, But what is, what in your opinion makes a great choreographer? Choreographer? Like strictly choreography? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like Uh. what are some, you know, attributes, skills even, should people try to acquire to help them with their choreography? I think I mean Kev says it enough (laughs) but like connect Mm -hmm. I think if like you're able to watch their work and appreciate it in a way that is just like it like gives you substance in a way um, then I think that's just good choreo Mm -hmm. Um, I don't like to like browbeat or like downplay anybody for like utilizing moves over and over again or whatever because it's like an artist has their ins and outs, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's okay sometimes, most of the time. Um, so, yeah, I think if you can, like, as cliche as it sounds, like, feel something when you watch that person or when you when they execute or when, they, when you see it on video, I think that can be labeled, like, an air quote, like, mm-hmm. good choreography. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I agree. Like, um, I think someone who's, like, Sam said is, like, honest and true like and it's just themselves in their choreography like that was i think that's what makes them a good choreographer because they're unique they're different Mm -hmm. they are them they're unapologetic unapologetically them (laughs) i was like oh my god um (laughs) but yes like i think someone who's that who's like that and can present that makes them a good choreographer because there's no like right or wrong between textures and like movement right like Mm -hmm. you can't compare anyone really like Mm -hmm. who's a great choreographer Mm -hmm. it's because they're themselves like I think that's what makes them a great choreographer. I see. Mm-hmm. And who are your favorite choreographers? Oh, <laughs> I thought about this. Thought about this. <laughs> top three. Oh, God. top three. Top three. Uh, and then this is in no order. Mm-hmm. Just people who constantly inspire me daily that aren't in my like close circle. Okay. So like team here at On One, whatever it is. Um, Bam Martin, mm. um, good choice. CJ Salvador, <laughs> good choice. And uh, <laughs> since the jump, uh, Devin Pornell. Ooh, yeah. Uh, I just Devin's raw. Just all of them, yeah. Like you said, like they're so raw, and it's just yeah. like I just truly appreciate how like no one can really move like all of them, mm-hmm. and um, just what they put out is such like honest work, um, and they're all like grinders and they always like have like pen to paper and they're always pushing out stuff Mm -hmm. um so as someone that appreciates that and appreciates them specifically it's like very motivating um to do the same so yeah there's a ton that go into that melting pot as well um but i think those people come to mind for a reason Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. yeah 
Good choice. Man, that's tough. This is a tough question. Yes, uh, I'm going to do a top four because I couldn't decide. <laughs> um, so one's got to be uh, Caitlin Watson, even mm. though I don't necessarily uh, like dance anything like her, mm-hmm. um, nor will I ever get that close mm-hmm. to being like water. Um, but, you know, something about her movement and her choreography is like, wow, I would love to learn that one day. So, okay. yeah, her. Um, this one's going to go to uh, second one, I would say Shay. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. La, I don't even know. It starts with an L, but he's he's crazy. Um, check him out. Yeah, check him out. And then uh, Tony Czar. We'll put it on mm. there. Tony Czar. Man, this dude is a legend, man. I yeah. took in his class twice, and every time it's like, wow. It's just something about his, like, movement. He's so big. He's a tall guy, yeah. and he makes you, like, he dances from, like, all the way up here mm-hmm. and all the way to the floor. And, mm-hmm. like, Two, two to five seconds, you know, like, so all the tall people out there, there's no excuses for, <laughs> um, you know, levels because he can do it, man. Yep. He's a big guy, too. Yep. So <laughs> Tony Czar. And then last one, it's got to be Lyle, man. Lyle. What do I have to say? What I <laughs> but obviously, like, these people are just, like Sam said, like, people who aren't in my, in, like, my circle, you know, or, like, people around me. Mm-hmm. These are people who I've looked up to for, like, years, you know, yeah. like, um, so, yeah, those four for sure. And they're all amazing. Wow. Well. For sure. All so, star team. all stars. <laughs> Last question for the day: um, mm-hmm. If you could pick one thing about choreography, what is your most favorite part? Um, getting to express, you know, like yeah, whatever I want to say. <laughs> I think that's the biggest. Yeah, a bit one. different answer. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think to express is definitely like my favorite part: of choreographing. Like, uh, I guess that goes with any dance. You know, like just dancing in general. But I think sure. choreographing um, it allows me to like, in, instead of just kind of like free word or free speech, I'm getting to like write it down and like be able to really say what I want to say clearly and like precisely. So that's my favorite part. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, aside from like the process and everything, I feel like being able to put like a, whether you record it, whether you're in class teaching it or you're just doing it for yourself, like a, like a, get to do it full out for the first time or the first few times. Mm. I think that's like closing the book mm-hmm. in a sense. And it's just like, like oh man, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cause, and it's cool because like when you see it or you just feel it and you're done, it's like I, time and time again, it's like <laughs> I didn't think I would, I would get here yeah. mm-hmm. and feel this great about it. Um, so I think that's a very like precious moment for me. Um, like seeing it unfold. yeah aside right. from <laughs> being able to like having the opportunity to share yeah i think is a gift as well it can mm. also be not so much one in terms of how you look at it but being able to share uh, what i create i think is a a blessing i'll never be able to like do anything to show enough gratitude for Thanks. for sure mm-hmm. yep snaps snap <laughs> snap snap uh, i feel like i have so many more questions to ask you guys but unfortunately our time is over for this episode uh (laughs) tier but to our listeners thank you for listening and watching and basically just supporting us overall um follow us on youtube spotify instagram facebook twitter so you don't miss out on the good stuff speaking of good stuff once again save the date on april 4th for our annual sprint intensive intensive (laughs) um thank you sam and kevin for being here today and thank you giving sincere advice and just being your humble self as always and um thank you to the production team for making this all happen (laughs) once again i'm donita this has been between us foos i wish you the best from the west peace peace